Right folks, quick video this time. Mole calculations number three, enthalpies of combustion, standard enthalpy of combustion it's called, actually I missed the standard, sorry. Oh. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world in fact. Um, the definition of this, I could run through the definition first actually on text because that's one way they try and catch out. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the calculations. Um, it is defined as you completely, uh, do you know what, I'm going to pause it and write it out. Right, so there's a text definition. Uh, of the standard enthalpy of combustion. When you completely um, burn one mole of a fuel uh, to produce, to make the products in their normal states at room temperatures. I've underlined three areas there that it will try and trick you in. For example, if you had this equation here, H2 um, plus, so you could have, say, that. Uh, no, sorry, my apologies. Do that. Uh, that would make 2H2O. That is not the standard enthalpy of combustion um, for hydrogen gas because you're burning two moles of it. Um, you would have to rebalance that equation and have it like this. And then whatever enthalpy change that is, that delta H there, that is indeed the standard enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen. Uh, that would need to be a liquid in order to make that bit happy. And your famous other tripwire is something like this, which is partial combustion, CO, carbon monoxide, um, even though it's in its normal state. Nope, uh, I could probably balance that, but I can't be bothered. Um, so anyway, the, the underlying parts here are parts to be aware of. Let's look at the actual calculation. How would you do this in reality? There was a time when the SQA wanted you to know all five measurements you actually had to make. Do you know what? I'm just going to go and check that, see if that's the case anymore. So that would be a no, but uh, anyway, let's have a quick look at how we do the experiment and the calculations go with it. It's very similar to National 5, there's just one more thing added on. Um, you would have a fuel here. Uh, that's meant to be a candle, oh dearie me. You would have a liquid that you're heating up, which 99% of the time is water. Um, you'd have a thermometer in the liquid. And if you cast your minds back to National 5, the energy, we called it, but it's actually enthalpy, um, that's released... Uh, during this reaction. We can't measure that directly by sticking the thermometer in the flame, so we heat the water up and we capture, hopefully, all of the heat in the water, which we really don't do, of course. Um, you lose tons of energy. But it's C times M times delta T. Uh, that's the specific heat capacity. It's how difficult it is, how much energy is required to heat up one kilogram of this liquid by one Celsius. Because we're dealing with water, its value is in the data book. It's 4.18. If the if you heated something else up, like an alcohol or an oil, they'd have to give you the correct number for it. That's the mass. By the way, all three terms here, they're all to do with the liquid that you're actually heating up. So that's the mass in kilograms. So, for example, say we heated up 0 0.5 kilograms um, by doing this. And the delta T is the temperature change. So let's say we got a 20 degree Celsius rise. We would do the sums and out would pop a figure of, let me just check, that would be um, 2.09, isn't it? 2.09, that's half of 4.18 times 20. I would pop a figure of, um, huh, of course it is, I never thought of that, that's, that's 10 times that, 41.8. That number there is in kilojoules, it's actually negative because it's exothermic, this reaction is negative. Um, go and have a look at my enthalpy videos if you're not sure why. That is not your final answer, though, because that would be for a certain mass of the fuel. For example, let's say that we weighed this candle at the start, we did the reaction, we weighed the candle at the end, and let's say, not candle, sorry, let's say we're burning a, f a fuel for easy counting. Let's say we used 0 0.1 grams of propane to do this, to release that amount of energy. But we want the standard enthalpy of combustion, which is one mole. So we have to scale this answer up. So what we do now is scale up to pretend, or to work out how much energy would have been released if we had burned one mole. Now, it's at this point that I'm going to do my proportion calculations on this. I'm going to look at the type of data we've got here, which is an enthalpy. And I'm going to look at the type of data we've got here, which is a mass. Um, I know Tally doesn't like me doing this, so I'll change to moles for her later on as well. I'll show you the other way. Um, 0 0.1 grams did indeed release that much. So 0 0.1 grams released negative 41.8 kilojoules. 
Now, the mass that we would put in here, this, of course, we were hoping to find a number of kilojoules x here. Um, so we need a number that goes in here, and then we have three numbers out of four. We can do proportion, and we can work out the fourth one. The, the mass that would go in here is the corresponding mass of one mole of this, which, in other words, is just the GFM. So what's that? 36 plus 8, um, 42? Uh, no, no, sorry. My goodness. It's 44. Get it right here. So now that we've got this calculation here, there's a few ways to do this. Um, I am lazy, so I like cross-multiplication, where that times that is equal to that times that. In other words, 0.1x equals negative uh, 41.8 times 44. Therefore, x equals that lot there over 0 0.1. Let me just work that one out. So I have an unfeasibly large um, number here, but that's beside the point. That's because I pulled the numbers out there earlier on the question. Sorry, any chemistry teacher will realize just how wrong this is. 392. Now you are actually in kilojoules per mole. And this is one of the rare uh, questions where they may not give you the unit and they'd expect to realise it in the answer. Um, if you don't like the proportionality system, let's do it a different way. Up here, I'll redo it using moles. Um, because what I'm going to say is, I burned 0 0.1 grams of fuel, and I released 41.8 kilojoules. Oh, by the way, sorry. Oh, that was a deliberate mistake. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't forget to put the minus in at all. Accidentally. I forgot to put the minus intentionally to burn it into your brains because that would be a shame to lose a mark for that. Exothermic is negative delta H. Let's do the mole calculation systems up here. So 0 0.1 grams. Oh my goodness. Now they're not being interrupted by psychological torture bells here at Melbourne Academy. Um, let's turn 0 0.1 grams into moles. We do that by dividing by the GFM. So 0 0.1 over 44. Let me just get that for you. That coincidentally ends up with a very weird repeating number. Um, so you end up with that. That's the number of moles you actually burned of the fuel. Uh, and we know that we released 41.8 kilojoules. So if you divide 41.8 by that number of moles, you should get exactly the same answer. Let me just double check that for you. We do indeed end up with a negative 18 point, sorry, point. My goodness, hey, get your specs on. Uh, equals a negative 18,397, interestingly. You do it that way, probably because of rounding errors, which is why I like proportion, because there's less rounding involved. So, uh, that would also be kilojoules per mole. Um, so that's standard enthalpy of combustion, guys. It's a bit like National 5. There's this extra tweak, two tweaks, I suppose, where they put these classifiers in, and they often ask you in multiple choice questions, which one of these would be the enthalpy of combustion? And they want you to know... Um, that you're burning complete combustion, one mole of fuel, normal states for everything. Um, the other one is the actual calculation, which is based on National 5, which is CM delta T. And we all remember that one. However, now, once you've done that, you need to scale up to work out what the delta H would have been if you burned one mole of your fuel. Um, I say scale up. I suppose in theory it could be scaled down if you ever managed to burn more than one mole of fuel, but you'd have to be heating up like an Olympic-sized swimming pool for that. Uh, in order not to boil it. Um, and you can do it by pr proportionality, where you analyse the type of data, so we're dealing with masses and enthalpies, or you can convert the mass that you burned into moles and then scale up from there. Either one is good. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this has been uh, useful to you. If it has been useful, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.